Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Dirty 20 Gaming Wednesday night. This is the Welcome to the Shadowlands Fatal Familiar game. My name is Shadow, also known as the True Shadow Mancer, and I'll be your narrator tonight. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do our introductions. Last week, I went from top to bottom, so this week, I'll go from bottom to top. How lounge. You switched the order, didn't you? Nice. I of course. Know I was switching the order. <laughs> Hi, I am Hellhounds20. I am a VTuber Griffin plushie. I, uh, I GM, I do art, I play games, I listen to metal music, and I produce for these chuckleheads two nights a week on Thursdays and Sundays. I'm tired. I'm trying to order myself some food over here. All right, we can go ahead and move on up and Maeve. Hi, I'm Ruth. Um, head empty. I am here three times a week. I'm here on Tuesdays as Exit. Today is Maeve and Sundays is Anya. Uh, otherwise, I'm trying my best. That's all. All right, <clears throat> Payne. Hi, I am the Scarred Adventurer. Today here I'm on this on this lovely channel we have. Everyone seems to be tired or something. But that's, you know, it's the way we are. Uh, <clears throat> on this lovely channel, I, on Wednesdays, play Fane or Samson, or today at least. Um, on on Tuesdays, you can find me here as Red Death on our Cyberpunk Red campaign, uh, run by the lovely Bison Stonefist. On Thursdays, I am in the uh, I am in the Fool's Gold campaign as Lucas, the Crimson Lion, uh, run by our wonderful Sarah Sands, and on Sunday I am the narrator in the game Vest and the Devil You Know, run by me. Uh, I think that's all I'm hearing. That's all I need to be doing at the moment. Uh, aside from that, I also work with the wonderful Sarah Sands at, over at Tangor Productions uh, to make stuff. All righty. Crimson. Uh, hi, I play Crimson. My name's Sarah. Uh, I am over on Tango Productions where I stream on, if we're not here, I'll stream over there. Um, I am also working with the Scar Adventure on stuff. It's coming eventually. Uh, I am currently in a show. We have three more days of Spaceship Online. If you've ever just wanted to be gossipy, for like two hours, come see the show because you get to do it without consequences. It's a, uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. And then I am here four nights a week, uh, Tuesday as Magic, Wednesday as Crimson Rave, Thursday I am running the Fool's Gold campaign, Keen's Pyrite, and on Sunday I am playing Lily O'Connell in the Vezin Devil You Know game. Sorry, you need to just take a breath sometime. <laughs> no, thank you. All right, folks. And as I introduced earlier, I am Shadow, also known as the True Shadow Mancer. I'll be the narrator for tonight's game. We are playing using the Fatal Familiar Game Set Rules by MC Griffin. A link to the site for the rule set is in our chat. Uh, our digital tabletop of preference is roll 20 uh, roll 20.net artwork has been provided by the hand of hellhounds um, my artwork has been provided by hero forge and the background art has been provided by mc griffin through the media package of fatal familiar all right so when we last left our group they were hired by an individual by the name of Bucket to go into the Shadowlands to retrieve a lunar pearl, a piece of solidified ether that is of great value and desire by many individuals. 
agreeing to the contract, our group followed Bucket's map out of the elsewhere of Seattle and into the foothills of Mount Rainier. There they found not only the impact crater uh, of the lunar pearl, but a toontown that seemed to have sprung up around the impact crater. With a little bit of exploration, the group have found what seems to be the resting place of the pearl and several pigments that seem to be interested in the pearl and our party. After a short combat with three familiars of a known freak, the owner of the silver, excuse me, the Lucky Strike casino and apartments, our group was faced by the chilling voice and imposing figure of a figment known only as Bo. Our scene opens with you all. What are you doing? I am immediately taking cover. I was I already have, hiding. I have tangled with foe before, and it went poorly the last time I did that. So I have no intention of Monty's going... Monty's a pretty good shield. Crimson is frozen. Yeah. He doesn't want to put you guys in danger, though, so he's just going to wander over behind a something. Maybe a crate. There's one in the area. Well, as was described before, yeah, you are on what appears to be a 1930s era. All city. right, then I hide with I, I I'm, but we're by the movie theater. Correct, and then we're. So I'm going to hide in the ticket stand. Okay. All right. So Fane moves towards the ticket stand. Uh, Samson. Samson kind of looks around, sighs, and just walks over back towards the ticket stand and just waits there with him. And I'm sorry, Crimson and Eric, we're doing... Uh, freezing, but in a way that we have put our body between the group and foe. Okay. All right. And then Maeve? Sorry. No worries. Um, Maven Monty. Maeve is positioning herself next to Crimson. Okay. So Maeve steps up. What is Monty doing? Standing kind of like behind but in the middle of the group okay and diddy diddy has backed up to hide in the alleyway because they like the shadows oh, okay um so eric is probably also going to prepare his special power all right Monty's so, well. so remember to have them do a special power it will be you will use bones like as Otherwise, they will do something random because you're not fully in control. So, before we get started here, Didi, if you would for me, go ahead and make a stealth roll. Oh, I'm forgetting something. I need to grab my dice. Would it be all right if I do that so as well? A stealth roll? Yeah. Yes, but I'm going to oppose both of yours with uh, reception checks. Okay. Well, that doesn't matter. My D6 fell into the trash. <laughs> Bad math, Brock. Give you're, me not a, give me... Into, you're not supposed to go into dice jail yet. Give me a hot second. <laughs> myself, that, myself. So it looks like I rolled a critical success. Oh, uh, remember, it's going to be opposed. So what's your total? Eight. Eight. 
with the opposed check becomes a six. So you got a success. Excellent. Because I'm also stealthing my way around so where I looked like I jumped isn't where I actually am anymore. And I just realized I'm missing... Oh, there she is. Not going to use that D6. I'm going to use a different one for sanitary reasons. Uh, in total, that is five. In total, that is five? Mm -hmm. So, two mixed results. All right. So, Diddy. The individuals that are that you're trying to hide from, they don't know exactly where you are, but they know roughly where you are. Vane, uh, you've aimed a success against uh, two of the individuals, so they have no clue where you've moved to. But go ahead and uh, describe how you are moving for me, real quick. So. Thane has essentially entered his hunter kind of mode. Which is a, a way of saying he's low to the ground, he's moving quietly and quickly. But not quickly enough to draw any sort of attention. It's kind of like keeping up a good pace without, yes, lurking. Um, uh, kind of picking up a good pace to stay mobile and try to slowly start building my way around them to find a better angle from which to strike. Okay. So, as you are moving around the ticket booth and uh, basically moving from vehicle to vehicle to try and keep out of Bo's line of sight as you try and pick a better angle, as you move between two of the vehicles, you are, I, I can't say suddenly, but you are aware. Uh, are you in a low crouch as you're moving or? It's kind of, it's, yeah, it's a low crouch. It's kind of okay. the All right. knees are bent, arms are out. All right. So as you come around one of the ends of the, uh, the end of one of the vehicles, you are face to, we'll call it face to thigh, with a sparkling red dress that has a slit that goes from hem to hip, and behind which is a leg that just seems to go on forever. Trying very hard not to stare too much at that and <laughs> give away my position through... The, oh. the rest of you, almost as soon as Fane moved behind you, you saw the woman in red. You, you, Maven Crimson, you could see her eyes tracking movement. And then she walks at a angle. And you could, you swear you could almost hear the ba-doom, boom, ba-doom, boom, ba-doom, boom. Ba as her hips sway as she's walking. It's doing that crazy thing where the, it goes, I'm trying to just do hip wise, where each hip kind of goes like that during each step, isn't it? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Her walk is literally one foot in front of the others. Her hips very obviously sway as she walks. Well, oh, look what I found over here. This is a handsome one. Can I keep him? And no. as, she, as she says that thing, there's this red mist that seems to envelop the two of you. I'd like to essentially in a vain attempt to stop her from doing any of this. I'd like to take my knife and stab her in the foot. 
All righty. Um, your knife strike will be against her grapple attack. Okay. I got a seven. This is the second time I've rolled a six with this dice tonight. I may have accidentally taken some of Ruth's luck that was meant for okay. Sarah. <laughs> All right. I have, I have just I have just the response for this. Hold on. And as a reminder, your element is gravity, correct? Yes. I'm if I can, I want to make the knife as heavy as possible. To literally make it an immovable, like the immovable rod from another famous role playing game. Something to do with two of the same letter. I can't remember. Maybe there's an ampersand? I don't know. So, um, as your opposing attacks occur, you get a single success. Okay. So, you. Lower her to her spoons by one with your strike. Single success. As she backs off a little bit and seems, she seems almost hazy to your vision, as if you can't quite see exactly where she is. All right. I roll tired to take advantage of this. I have a skill called tired. <laughs> Well, at this point, at this point, a blow has been struck, so we're going to go ahead and move into our initiative. Is this dice weighted? It better not be. Did you roll another? Initiative is your D6 plus combat, combat. right? Yeah, and I have a combat of two. Four. Three. That is a total of five. Gotta be rolling this wrong somehow. I need to invest in a dice tower so it doesn't run in the trash again. All right, I do apologize. I was getting my initiative thing here all set. Uh, so, Crimson, you rolled a Read it. I hear that correctly. Yes. Okay. Being. I, I rolled eight. eight. Okay. Maybe I didn't hear. Four. Four. All right. Diddy. Five. All right. Three, four, five, eight. Yep. As long as they have six, seven, then we've got the perfect flush. At least I'm not going first this time. It's not a good idea. Yeah. Well, you got one of your wishes. <laughs> Can't be up here right now. Get my order sorted out here. Should have this on a spreadsheet rather than a notepad, but that's a tomorrow problem. All right. So at the top of the order is Fo. We've got a total of 11. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't like that. And as the woman steps backwards, Fo. Uh, Pulls his hands out of his suit pockets and does a pair of finger guns towards Fane as you hear shots fired. So I'm trying to remember uh, what it's a shot, right? Correct. 
what is the opposing skill necessary to block a shot? And what range is he in? Uh, well, since you were moving around, Scarlet moved up to intercept you. I'm going to say about 25 feet. 25 feet, okay. Yeah. I really do want to make a flow chart for this. Okay. Just trying to find the flow chart in the rule book. Shots react to missiles. Missiles react to spray. Spray reacts to shot. Because you're not in yeah, melee. Because I'm not in melee, so I can't I can't do anything. Right. Um, There's actually nobody in melee with him right now, unless somebody has a shot missile or spray that they want to do. Or wait, no, he did a shot. So if anyone has a spray, then what I do is reaction to his shot. So we never discussed the range of the whip. Uh, whip is technically a melee. Okay. I think I'm going to have to take this, yeah. Okay. All right, then. Um, because it's a shot, um, you can oppose it with... And I do apologize because I'm still trying to remember everything. I don't need that. I need this. Uh, agility. Agility? Yeah, because you're trying to dodge the shot. Yeah. No, no, that's a, that's a that's a failure. That's a one. A one. Yep. I just start talking. Yep. All right. Um. So that means with his total, you get to double success. So you lose two spoons. Okay. All right. Uh, that moves us to Fane and Samson. All right. Um, all right, so Thane, because he, he's just surprised the red woman. Uh, Thane is going to go in for essentially a grapple to try and grab, sorry, uh, and try to grab her so that he can use her essentially as a shield slash hostage. All right, so grapple. All right, go ahead and roll your gra grapple as she looks at you with a pout and says, but I'm too pretty for you to hurt. Oh, okay. I'm going to roll cold heart uh, for my asset then, as opposed to fight. I will allow that. Because that makes sense to, I'm too pretty to get hurt, and then just chill down to nothing. Just so I can have an unfeeling moment as I get five. Minus her defense of four. It's a failure. It is a failure. But that does take you to a one. Another struggle token. Now, Fane, on the other hand, and this is going to cost me a spoon, is just, going to... You spend the, spend the spoons for Samson's grapple. That was my grapple. Okay, so Fane tried to grapple. Yes. Okay, so not Samson then. Samson is going to turn his attention to foe okay. and use his special power, which is gravity immobilization, to essentially force Samson, to force, not Samson, Samson will force foe onto his knees. 
by creating a gravity well essentially so heavy beneath him that he is forced to kneel. Alrighty, go ahead and roll. Spin the spoon. It's... Spin spoon. Uh, you're at the spoons for the attack. Yep, that puts me. But doesn't that mean he's at zero spoons? Nope. Oh. Uh, I had ten spoons to start with. I spent four last uh, session. Mm -hmm. I took two this time. So I got one left after this. Yeah. Okay. It's risky, but it's. Okay, so roll your, uh, because this is Samson, you're rolling your dice six plus power. That's a 10. And I've got a nine. <laughs> so, as Samson tries to create this gravity well, you just see the muscles bulge underneath Bo's suit as he continues to just stride forward instead of being buckled to his knees. Oh, Brigitte, I love this kind of competition. Why don't you bow to me? Is Samson's only response. Juicy. All right. They both rolled anime successes. Scarlet. Oh, that's Scarlet. Um, and the other red woman, I'm like, it's like, oh, wait, no, that's not Crimson, that's Scarlet Hayes. Yes, the figment's name is Scarlet Hayes. Uh, okay, she's able to do it. So, uh, Bane and everybody else who's watching this go on, go happen. The woman has actually disappeared into this mist of scarlet fog. And is enveloping Bane. Buy me dinner first. <coughs> Bane, I just want to make you cough. It's almost like a very fine perfume. You almost want to inhale the scent to get more of it. That is her yeah. action. Me, as a player, super allergic to perfume. I would be coughing. I would be dying. Uh, as Fane, I don't know what he's doing. Well, right now, we'll find out on your next turn. Did yes. Okay. A lot has just happened. We got so incoming. Oh shit. I. I don't know what Diddy would do right now. Because currently they're hiding. They're trying to. You want to continue to try to hide or move around? I kind of want to try and tar blob, so. <laughs> it's a great risk, but I kind of want to do it. You, you've got the range, so. I have a very small question quickly. Mm. Sorry, um, and this may actually help Diddy. So this is um so Foe rolled a nine and against Samson's opposing ten. Correct. Does that nine count as a supreme success or an anime success? Nine and ten. Um because there's also eight and nine is supreme, but nine right. and ten is anime. But the total became a one because I subtract your result from your opponents. Oh, okay. That's what. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I get another struggle then. Yes, 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 sure you do. How many you got now? Three. One more not a bad evolution. Yep. 
All right. So I, I'm sorry, Diddy. I am going to spend the four spoons to try and tar blob the, the stunning sleep missile at foe. Alrighty. That's oh, a miss attack, is it not? Hmm? That is a missile attack, is it not? Yes. All right. Missile shots react to missiles. He's already had his turn, so if he wants to react, he's going to have to lose his next turn. Um, no, he's not going to react because you also partially stealth, and he's focused on Samson right now. Oh boy! So you get your missile attack against Bo. My I know it's a D6, but what am I rolling again? Uh, dice 6 plus, well, it's a missile attack, so um, if you were a figment, it would be your power. You are a figment. I'm sorry, if you were familiar, it would be your power. Because you're a figment and you have character stats, it's going to be either your combat or your agility. It doesn't matter which one I'm using, they're both one. Okay. So dice six plus one. That is a total of six. Oof, against Bo's ten. Um oh. that's a one. Get a struggle token. Okay. Yes, Grimson, there's a reason why Foe wiped out your previous party. And why Fane um, decided to go for the other person as opposed to horrifying monster. Uh, Maeve. It's your and Monty's turn. I don't know who to go for. Um, how far oh, I should have, I should have is Bo? So Bo's across the street, so he's 20 feet from you. Okay. And is me melee range five feet? Correct. Okay. Um Monty and uh this is a bad idea. But it could be really good. Uh, Crimson has a really bad idea too, so don't worry. Yeah, Monty and Maeve are going to get into melee. I have a movement of 25 feet. So I'm going to yeah. go, at, but not right up to him. I will stay five feet away. Um, and... Uh, What do you think, Monty? Bit of high voltage to shake things up? And Monty's going to use the electricity whip. All righty. So it's Monty, so it's going to be dice six plus Monty's uh, power. And if you're telling him to use the whip, you have to subtract uh, the cost from your spoons. It's a special power. So it would be one spoon. Because okay. you're still telling him what to do. Yeah. All right. All right. That's a six plus five. That's an 11. Minus his eight becomes a three. Mixed result. All right. Um, so what, please remind me, what does his whip do? Electrocution. So it just does electricity damage? Yeah. No effects? Um, I mean, the whip could wrap around. Well, what we have is a mixed result. So I can do either 
what was your goal with the attack with the whip? What were you trying to do besides damage him? Get him off guard. Get him off guard. So you're trying to distract him? All right. Yeah, like, you get shocked, you're kind of... Off balance. Yeah. Okay. So, here's what I'm going to let you choose. Since you have a mixed result, you can either damage him for a spoon or throw him off balance. Gonna take the extra spoon. You can take a spoon. No, do you, you're not taking an extra spoon. Are you gonna do a spoon of damage to him or are you gonna throw him off balance? A spoon of damage, so it would just be one spoon. You'll do one spoon of damage to Fo. Hmm. I'll get him off balance. All right, so he is thrown off balance as you kind of taser him with the whip and it kind of sends his body into his compulsion. And before we come to Maeve, I got to take care of something real quick. I will be right back. Ah, perfect time for my terrible jokes. I will also be right back, although I do love oh. the joke. Oh dear, this is actually happening then. Um, oh no. <laughs> My wife and I's friend booked a red table at a restaurant called the Manhattan Project, and I'm the bad guy for asking if it's a fusion restaurant. I mean, technically it's a fission restaurant, but whatever. Um, <laughs> so, girl I was dating recently went, I have a daddy kink. And I went, well, you're in luck, because I just threw some burgers on the grill, champ. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> So today you learn some wonderful Victorian slang called muffin wa walloper. A muffin walloper is an unmarried woman who enjoys meeting up with her friends to gossip over tea and cakes. The more you know. Please shadow stop him. I mean, when I was growing up, we just called that a fence sitter, but... Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> Maeve. Oh, I lost Maeve. Got Diddy back. They also but... had to leave. Uh, so I was recently playing Monopoly. I was, no, I lost it. Never mind. Where's uh, the, we pull this guy off stage. <laughs> uh, All right. So your host, we'll you can, mo you can mute him. You can. It's fun. Yes I, yes, I can, but it's more fun to mock him. It is. Uh, so, so we'll, oh. we'll, we'll come back to Maeve. <laughs> the gun has come out and we'll go to Crimson and Eric oh but someone says go on <laughs> yes but that's him and imps like to cause chaos exactly and who is more chaotic than the scarred adventurer I know really imp, enough? imp no no imp do not encourage his behavior <laughs> you son of a bitch I know <laughs> Oh. Our producer, know, oh. our producer has just. <laughs> our, our producer has just threatened to turn the show around and go back to the beginning. So, yeah. So we need to listen uh, to the producer. Yes, yeah. I, yes, we do. Oh, that's maybe, what, okay. That's why I named myself Doc with a gun. All right, Maeve. What would you like to do? I already were, did did my thing. Uh, Crim, Crims, or sorry, Monty did his thing. Actually, you are correct because if you you commanded him, so okay, you are correct. My apologies. No worries. New rule system, folks. Oh, then I did my thing wrong. Uh, that's all right. We're all learning. I'll punish you later, Crimson. Mm -hmm. Scarred is getting me to the point I'm going to get the whip out. <laughs> All right, Crimson. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
you and Eric, what would you like to do? Um, we are, um, our plan is to basically hold him back so everyone else can run. Okay. Uh, using our sonic duplicates. Okay. Those are... A special attack. Special attack from Eric. Okay. All right, so um, spend the spoon to activate the duplicates. Yep. And at this point, I'm, I'm not going to have you roll anything because it, it, it would... What I'm imagining you've now done is you've created these images of crimson, correct? Um, yes, these would be okay. of crimson, not of uh, Eric. Okay. So, and how many duplicates is it? We get uh, says three because they're supposed okay. to be like backup singers. Okay, so three duplicates of crimson. So there's now four crimson standing on the corner going in different directions. Do I understand that correct? Um, no, uh, she's effectively screaming run to the group and she's creating a sonic, um, almost like wall, trying to hold foe back. Okay, so who's, okay, Eric's creating the duplicates. Yep. Crimson's creating the wall. They get a sonic, uh, so it's just basically a sound wave. And they just mimic. Oh, no, you're right. I messed up. That, that, that's right. We're all learning, so. Yeah, because. Oh, no, they're only supposed to mimic Eric. They're supposed to be of Eric, not Crimson. Okay. That's why I'm confused. There we go. So Eric uses his special power, creates mm -hmm. multiple of himself. Yep. Then they're just gonna. Uh, I'll use the next round for them to do the do, do the sound idea, because uh, they just copy him. So they're just like, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Alrighty. We will move then back to the top of the turn order, back to foe. Look at the little rabbits and her little friends. Did you come back for, for revenge, little rabbit? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Was it Mabe or just Monty who stepped up to foe? Both. I'm sorry? They both, both stepped up? All right. So, as Bo is taunting Crimson, he kind of glances in the direction of Maeve and Monty and starts to do a sidestep. And let me just double check something real quick. I have him off balance. All right. Um, yeah, he just kind of does a sidestep as if he's trying to go around the two of you to head towards Crimson. Can I, can we try to stop that from happening? Uh, well, since it's not an actual attack, um, you don't have a reaction to it, but you'll be able to do something on your turn. Remember, we're still talking about combat rounds here. All right. So 
That was faux. Hey. So looking at the book very quickly, I realized I can use three tokens to create a revelation. Yes, you can, you can spend three tokens to create a revelation. If you get a fourth token, um, it, it autom happens automatically. Yes, an automatic revelation. But I can also force a revelation just using the three I have. That is correct. I, I want to do it, but it feels like it's going to take more time to work out what the move does, what move it creates. See, that's what the narrator decides. Oh, cool. Let's do it then. I spend, I spend my three struggle tokens. All right. You're spending the three struggle tokens. What is it that uh, you're trying to do? Essentially, I'm trying to get Thane to be, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to help Thane grow strong enough that he can defeat foe, even if I choke to death in a cloud of weird perfumey niceness. All right, so you're trying to basically empower and strengthen Thane. Yes. Okay. For what this looks like, Thane is going to take the knife he has, sigh very tiredly about it, kind of the, I really liked this knife, and throw it over to Thane. Sorry, and throw it over to Samson. Thane will throw it to Samson. All right. Samson, through catching it, either absorbs it into himself or learns to use it. Just a moment, I want to check something. I also did my math wrong earlier. I have three spoons left, not one. Because it was four yesterday, two, one, and then that's eight. No, that's okay. seven as opposed to nine. <laughs> so you're going to be adding this to Samson's thing. Uh, or uh, how many slots does he have left? By the way, I have four. Put it in your empty in, empty spot. Any particular one you'd like? Whichever one you would like to put it in. That's your choice. Okay. But this is a shot, and it is relentless. Another relentless. Awesome. And what happens? Oh, I'll also put on there that is gravity. Gravity relentless. Got it. Yes. So as you toss your knife towards Samson, Samson uses the gravity well that he's trying to hold the bow in place with and uses it to redirect the knife like a bullet straight at bow. So essentially, essentially creating not quite a rail gun using gravity instead of magnets, but more or less, yeah. Same yeah. idea. Um, and you are going to make an attack, you, uh, a shot attack, using Samson's power. Okay. <clears throat> and that is, I'm just doing the math quick. That's a cost of three for that move, whenever I do it. Two. I'm assuming, I'm, I'm hoping that this one is free. Yes, correct. Because you spent the three tokens to create the revelation, it's free, but it would normally be two. Thank you. Yeah, el el elemental powers don't add to the cost of uh, the, to the screen. No, I thought it did. No. Oh. I don't check that. No, then it's just two. Yeah. Cool. Seven. A 
seven. So you, it's a tie. I don't have any other struggle tokens. Yeah. So that's going to give you one struggle token because you just spent three. I'm, I have loose bottle caps around, so I'm just using those. <laughs> no worries. As, as long as you're tracking it. And unfortunately, I don't have... Uh, no, never mind. I don't have enough chopsticks to make that work. Chopsticks instead of spoons. <laughs> However you wish to name it, as long as... Uh, Sharp drop. Oh, na naming it. Yeah, yeah, that you said. I'm. I'm still working on the name. I'll, I'll. Okay. All right. While you are doing that, I'll move on to the next segment here. So that takes us to Scarlet, who. And because I spent the, it doesn't say whether or not doing a revelation causes, uh, costs the action for that turn, but I'm um, assuming it does. Yes, it does. Because you're getting a spoon free ability for that moment. Yes. All right. So Scarlet is going to attempt to do the same thing as she solidifies. Spending one of her spoons to choose her attack. As she tries to grapple Bane again. Okay. Um, I don't have my knife anymore, so I'm just going to use my fight. Okay, your combat? Proposing. Yeah. No, my, my combat, my fight. Oh, yes, you have the fight asset. Yes. I need to remove the knife asset now, don't I? Uh, yes. Yeah. I'll have to put that back some other time to find some other sharp object <laughs> to grab. That's an instant fail. That's a one. All right. You know what to do. As these mes misty tendrils wrap around Bane, uh, stunning him, and draining him. You lose. Oh, I got a mixed result. So we'll keep the stun and not do the damage. Okay. Sounds good. And that moves us to Diddy. Oh shit. I don't even I don't have anything witty to say. Uh I, I regret making a character that's not combat oriented. <laughs> <laughs> I effectively made a, a rogue. And that's my cursed class. It can work. It's just. I, I, I take objection to that because I play rogues and my rogues are very combat oriented. I, I, I know, Shadow, but the last time I touched a character sheet to create a rogue, my computer blue screened. It's a cursed class for me. <laughs> so here I am playing fucking gremlin rogue. Gods. Um. Oh, no, I have something witty now. I have something witty to say now. Go for it. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's just going. To, it's just, he's just going to kind of look at uh, Scarlet and kind of go. I'm surprised you were able to take my breath away. Oh, I regret it. I fucking regret it. <laughs> oh, um, I'm not evil. I'm just thought that way. You son of a bitch. I'm. I. Well, I took my time. I took my chances, and we'll see what happens. God damn it! <laughs> Next, we're gonna have someone seeing shave and a haircut. Um, I've been trying to fit in that line with the entire episode as well. 
took my time, took my chances. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to word this in my head. If I were to skirt past all of this to start running towards the pearl, would there be anything in my way? Just the the mist that seems to be emanating from where the pearl is. Okay. So from where, from basically the movie theater where you guys are starting, you have about 75 feet of street left before you get to where the pearl should be. My total movement is 25. Okay, so it's going to take you three turns to get to the pearl. Are you, are you guys okay with me doing that? I think it's the most sane move to make right now. Yeah, so Diddy is going to run as fast as they can down the road towards the pearl. Okay, so three turns, Diddy mo is moving towards the pearl. Yeah. All right, then. Um, Maeve and Monty. Um. I able to hit someone and then Monty also harm someone. Yes, if you want to, if you want to move in the same turn as your, or if you want to do an action and have your familiar do an action in the same turn, you have to spend a spell. <clears throat> but yes, you can do that. Okay, um, I'm going for Scarlet. Okay, so Maeve is going to work for Scarlet. And I'm going to punch her. Okay. So you, as you turn and start running towards Scarlet, because remember, Scarlet and Fane are 25 feet away from Foe. You step on something slippery, and I need you to make I'm going to call it an agility check. Six. Six. All right. Uh, so that's your die roll plus your agility. All right. So that gives him... So their movement's 25 feet. Well, unfortunately... You're not going to be able to move. As you turn, you step on this slippery substance. As you realize that as Bo moved away, he dropped a banana peel behind him, and you stepped right on it. And you are flat on your back. Cue Looney Tune sound effect. Oh, that's a redirecting as well. Give me just a moment. I believe that means he gets to choose which direction you move. I just wanted to save my best friend. Bo is not an easy opponent. Okay, yeah, he gets to redirect your direction with it with uh, that banana peel. So, Maeve, as you turn and you start running towards the two of them, instead of slipping and falling on your backside, you are directed in the opposite direction toward, you're now heading towards Crimson. What does Mondi want to do? He's not having fun with this faux motherfucker. He's going to chain whip. 
All righty. Electricity whip. It's better than my familiar. My familiar would have started laughing at me. Monty does what he wants. And what he wants to do is get rid of this asshole. All right. The banana spin. was corny. He doesn't like it. <laughs> spin the spoon since you're telling him what to do. And uh, make your roll. Do I have to tell him what to do for him to do it? Uh, no, if you don't tell him what to do, then you roll a dice six and go to that combat table, and it tells you what he actually does. I will. I, I'll tell him what to do. Okay. So now I'm at six spoons. My die fell under a pencil case, so I'm just going to re-roll because I didn't oh. see what it was. That's a 10. Total of a 10? Mm -hmm. All right, that's a tie. Fuck she drops your result to a one. Fuck this guy. So that's a struggle token? That is a struggle token, yes. And we had that, we had that, so now... We move to Crimson and Eric, who are, who have a sliding mave coming towards them on a banana peel. Hey. I'm really sorry to do this to you. <laughs> Whatever. Um my the the odds have fucked me enough. I'm fine. <laughs> Crimson, um, basically seeing this is going to kind of like she, because at this moment, yeah, she's performing because she's trying to stay as calm and as uh, positive as she can that we can do this. Is going to almost like dance move Maeve around her. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to roll performance. You could just oh. trip me and end and my slippering. She's trying to get you slippering in the back, in the right direction again. Yeah. Oh, hey. Okay. So do your performance. Uh, and please tell me if I put words in your mouth. Five. I don't think I no, did. No, it works. It actually works better. Five is the total? Yeah. I have... Right. Terrible dice luck. Can I add lucky to it? Uh, no, because it's Crimson doing it, but Crimson. You're right. Sorry. Crimson wasn't opposing anything. There was nothing to oppose. So five is a success. Crimson grabs you with a dance move and slides you back in the opposite direction, sending you back towards Foe. What about Eric? Um. Eric is just going to yell, run, trying to get the others to run. All right. We've seen this song and dance before. We don't need to see a reprise. No encore? No encore for this one. All right. So we come back to Foe, who has a hurtling mave coming at him. Um, reprise. Dane seems so to be nice. right where Scarlet wants him. So he's turning his attention back around. All right, so maybe it is. Okay, so as Maeve is sliding towards him, he goes into kind of a, a, a low prowler's crouch as if he's getting ready to catch her. And that moves us to Fane and Samson. Yeah, Fane is completely changing tactics. He's returning to Hunter, but he's changed what his prey is. Okay. So he's not he's he's no longer hunting 
for foe, he's hunting for some strange. Um, <laughs> it'll make more sense in a moment. Uh, he literally kind of just looks over to Scarlet and goes, So enough of this. What will it take for you to be mine? She pauses for a moment. What do you mean by that? You, me, together. Any way you want it. That's the way they like it, but, you know, any way you want it. Oh. I mean, why are you with this guy? And he looks at Foe for a moment. Trying to catch me. What does he have that someone else can't give you? He's got power. Is that all you care about? No. I'm simply, you asked what he has. I'm simply telling you that. So and repeat my that, question. Bane, do me a favor. Yes. I'm trying to decide. Make a charisma roll. Charisma. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just... I'm making you make a charisma roll. Yeah, six. <laughs> That's still a success. I don't have any. I don't. I don't have anything in charisma. Thane is built not to be charismatic. So with that Thane, she reaches up, runs her hand along your jaw, and almost a caress. Like I told you, I'm not evil. Just thought of that way. I don't think you're evil. I think you're gorgeous. You and every other piece of meat in this world. I'm not looking at the, what is frankly a very attractive body. I'm looking at you. We'll come back to that. Is Samson doing anything while you are attempting to do that? Uh, I'm not commanding Samson to do anything. Samson's probably going to do his own thing. Randomize it? Yeah. If this, if this costs me spoons, I'm, I'm dead. I don't have enough to spare. Oh, thank God. He just stretches. Oh, <laughs> he's just gonna. Yeah, Fane's doing his thing again. Oh, so they caught their last several familiars. All right. So with that, it's Scarlet's turn. I apologize to a host of communities. She puts her finger on the tip of your nose. Treat me right. That is all I asked. Spins on her heel. Bo, I'm done with you. And as she does this, her kiss manifests in the air and flies in Bo's direction. And Bo looks up, catches the kiss, and just crumbles it in his hand. <sighs> well, you were useful while you lasted, Bimbo. Uh, Fane is stepping in front of her immediately. Cracks his knuckles. So the real fight begins. And we move to Diddy, who is moving another... Movement closer. Oh, thank God that worked. Maeve. Hmm? It's your and Monty's turn. So, so, what's going on? 
Bo is, Bo is in a, like a low crouch, like he's getting ready to catch you. And then as you are approaching, he turns towards Scarlet and Bane and catches the kiss that she blew at him through the air and just crumbles it. Okay, so I'm sliding towards him and I use the speed and trajectory to fist punch the back of his head. All right, so we're going to do a combat attack. Okay, can I, can I add lucky to that? I'll let you use lucky in place of combat. Beautiful. It's a three instead of a one. Uh, sorry, I'm doing math. That's a seven. All right. That's a double. Would it be a surprise attack? That's why I didn't let him add his power to it. So that's a, a double success. You do two spoons to him. Yeah. Oh, uh, while I'm thinking about this, Art. Yep. You now have a new card. Thank you. Just keep in mind that right now she only has eight spoons. Well, no, actually, she's running on your spoons now. Yep, which means she has three. Uh... And, right. uh, are you doing anything with uh, Monty? Yep, he's going to, he's gonna use a special move. So now I'm at five spoons. Okay. Could you send me Scarlet's info later? What's that? Could you send me Scarlet's info later? I just sent it to you in the card. Oh. It should You're be... not going to believe this. It's another 11. Oh, you're using your whip again? Yep. My total is nine. That becomes a two. I rolled higher on this one. So he, miss he misses with the, the whip attack. Oh, hello. We got a raiding party from Wanderer's Haven. Thank you. Hello, hello raiders. Thank you for joining. Maybe I'm a second. I'll deal with that. <laughs> hello, everybody. All right. So from uh, that, we moved to Crimson and uh, Eric. Um. Oh, she. Uh, this uh little romance over in the corner, she's already kind of angry about, because she doesn't like Fane. Yep. Um. So. Uh, she just yells over. Once you're done thinking with your, once you're done thinking with your small brain, get back in the fight. I can't say that I was thinking with my big brain. I was, <laughs> but I, I can't say that because that would ruin, that would damage my relationship. <laughs> um, as she, she's trying to get foes back, attention back on her. Um, okay. And going to fire a missile at 
um, at foe. All right, so missile attack at foe. Does he have a reaction? Am I done slipping, by the way? And I am sorry, Scarred. <laughs> what? You insulted me? When did this happen? <laughs> no. I must have missed it. I just mean Crimson despises pain. So All right. Um, so he is going to react with his finger guns to your missile. Okay. So uh, roll your missile attack. And this is coming from Eric, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. Why am I only rolling twos? I haven't rolled higher than a two all night. Well, what's your total? Three. Actually, I take that back. That's an automatic automatic failure for foe. He rolled a one. <gasps> so three. And I take another spoon loss. And that's a mixed result. Uh, what's your missile? Um. Your total was three? Yeah, because it's combat plus my roll, plus, right? No, it's power. No, oh, it, power. Eric, it's his power. Oh, five then, total. Which is a success. You do a spoon of damage. Does it have any other effects? Uh, No, not the missile. All right. That's well, still a spoon of damage, so. Yeah, he... um. Yes, just look over here. Or I guess song lyric as this effectively says that. <laughs> My I'm I'm too tired to think of that song lyrics at the moment. Can you change your outfit on the fly? Because you could just do I'm back in black. It's ACDC. I don't know if that would work. You can, always, you can always tell him to turn around, bright eyes. Ooh, no, uh, it's I'm Mr. Brightside. That works too. All right. Uh, is that it, Crimson? Yep. All right. We come back to Bo. Maeve is there. To be perfectly honest, Monty has done more damage than anybody to him. So he's going to beefy slap Monty. Beefy slap? Beefy slap. <laughs> and uh, Monty, go ahead and roll a dice six plus your power. Nine. Well, that's a fail because he only got a total of six. So he just does a swinging backhand at Monty. Monty just kind of takes it and nothing happens. Monty is seven feet. So does he smack his like midsection? Oh, no, because Bo right now is about nine feet tall. Oh, okay. Seven, seven, nothing. That makes sense. Forgot well, about that detail. So uh, that moves us to Fane, uh, Fane, Sansom, and Scarlet. Now, Fane, since this is the first time we've had a freak with two familiars, you can, you can, at this point, Scarlet is in your quiver since you have Samson out. If you, yep. wish, if you wish to pull her out in addition, you can but it'll cost you one spoon per turn to have the extra familiar out, just so you're aware. Okay. Wait, Monty hasn't done damage to him. Maeve did. I thought it was Monty. It was Maeve. She punched him. All right. But either way, the damage was done to Monty. 
and, and the damage gets done to you through process of yeah transference yeah so yeah the, da the damage goes to you re regardless because your familiars don't have their own spoon pool mm -hmm. all right so where where are we oh yeah hey yeah um oh, of course that's what her domain is um <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I'm going to definitely have to look at Scarlet and go, and go, I'm going to have to look to Scarlet. Scarlet, I need you to go back, just for now. I don't I want anything to happen to you, especially considering he's angry that you... Anything for you... You need me just to whistle. And she vanishes into your quiver. Yep. Okay. I have a move that would potentially deal with foe, but it costs four spoons and I only have three. Okay. A somewhat related comment. Relating to all this, it's not based on the game though. I stepped out to get my food, and my mom is listening to Uptown Girls. <laughs> now suddenly, Fane has now suddenly uh, picked up a habit for smoking. Why? He can't seem to understand. It makes sense to like one person here. It's fun. <laughs> uh. Thane is going to look to Samson. Yeah, yeah. Samson, if you'd be so kind, hit him where it hurts. And he's going to do Shatter Strike, which is the shot that is the relentless in gravity, which means even if he blocks it, Still takes the damage. Yes. All right. And with and if and when it's successful, he will want to say one thing to foe. I say when it's successful. It's one of those. As long as it hits, which it should. It's an eight. That's a success. Yep. Um. He's aiming for kind of like by about where ears are. Okay. Eh? Trying to get him to bow his head almost with the gravity. And what were the effects on that shot? Relentless. Relentless. And... Okay. So it gets through regardless. It doesn't do any extra for that. So No. No. If I did if I did Ripper, but I don't have the spoons for Ripper. I could actually kill him. All right. So your shot strikes bow in the head, and you see his head begin to bow, and his neck muscles bulging as he's trying to resist it. But his head does eventually bow. Go home. We can finish this another day. You have nothing left to gain here, foe. Scarlet's no longer in the field. Diddy. Diddy. As you reach the this glowing sphere, it's about like this. Let's get that where you guys can see it. It seems to light up the cave with its own luminescence. The mist around it glows with a milky pearl essence. You feel yourself energized. Have you spent any of your spoons yet? Um, I am currently down to two spoons. You're back up to 10. Yes. 
And as you are absorbing this energy, your attention is drawn to a shadow moving through the crimson mists. There's a large bird-like form seems to be descending at you. Oh boy. As you watch this creature lands between you and the pearl. The creature has the I know, but I'm just the the creature has the hindquarters of a lion. The four quarters of a lion, lioness, I should say, from the chest up, she has the form of a young woman. Her long black hair curls down around her shoulders, and her great eagle wings fold in to rest against her body. Uh, 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 you can't have this unless you can solve my riddle. All right, then. What has four pod, four paws, and a body that just won't quit? And while you think about that for a moment, Diddy, we're going to move to the next segment, which is Maeve and Monty. Bucket chain whip. All righty. Ooh, I rolled a six. Eleven. Eleven minus six is five. That's a success. So you do one more spoon to bow. He seems to be starting to fall apart at the seams. Wait, no, because Monty was there. Okay. Did you remove a, a, a spoon point for having Monty do that? Yeah. Okay. Are you going to try to do anything this on this turn? No. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking. I really am. No. In that case, we move to Crimson and Eric. Okay. Um, where's Foe looking now? Uh, right now at Maeve and Monty. Well. It's like he's looking at the ground. Let me amend that. Yeah. Is there a way that I can... Crimson is trying to get him to get attention back. Because he, she wants them to run. She wants Maeve to run and Diddy to run. Fane, she doesn't care about. Um, 
I am nowhere near the combat. And you don't see Diddy anywhere. D okay. Diddy has disappeared. Okay, so Diddy's safe in her mind. Um, yeah, she's going to let Eric do her own thing. But using... Yeah, she's going to um, yell over to Foe and just ask, what do you actually want? Has anyone actually asked you that? And she's <laughs> using empathy, trying to, like, connect with this thing. His head turns. You can almost hear the muscles creak as he's forcing himself to look your direction. But everybody wants in their bottomless, heartless souls. Well, I'm not heartless. So explain it to me. Even you want it. Say that again. Even you want it. To have someone that, you know, is a family? Too naive. One moment, I'll be right back. I still think you have that for that. I totally missed that hellhounds. So, <laughs> did you hear the riddle that Diddy got? What has four paws in a body that won't quit? Oh, that wasn't the riddle. That was the introduction. Ah. <laughs> That's why I paused you for a moment. All right. So, Crimson, we're going to move. You were trying to talk. You were muted. Am I still muted? No, I was talking to Scar. Oh, oh, okay. Got me lost there for a moment. So, we're. We're going to pause there, Crimson, go to our next segment, okay? Uh, which is actually faux. Um, All right, so Bo takes a look around and everybody gets a very evil grin across his face. I suppose you'll find out soon enough. And he tries to rush at Crimson. Crimson, uh, because this is a rush attack, you can yeah. defend with either combat or agility. The, they're the same, so. Uh, or, Scarred, you have something? Yeah, uh, you have the copies of, uh, you have the copies out. Eric. Yeah. Not Crimson. That wouldn't be enough to confuse him, though. No, but Crimson's got one huge advantage right now that she doesn't know about. So, which one would you like to defend with? Um, agility. Alrighty. 
Go ahead and roll. <gasps> Five total. Five total? It is six I total. Four. Can I try to trip him? It's his to trip him, you'd have to have a reaction attack to his rush. All right. Um, if I spend my last spoon, I'm out, right? Yep, but don't worry. Her total is five. His total is six. It's a failure. Oh, oh, thank God. Oh, damn. So he rushes at Crimson, trying to bowl her down. And as she sidesteps the bull rush attack, the suit seems to suddenly empty and float gently to the street. And Poe is gone. Now, the two closest individuals to Poe as he goes down are Crimson and Maeve. Do either one of you wish to try to do a capture maneuver? I'm going to look to Crimson and be like, I so just Crim met the guy. What is, what is your capture asset? Um, it's a song. It's uh, music, just like everything music. else with hers. Um, Describe your capture asset. Uh, it's a <laughs> it's a song lyric again. Um, and it's not gonna make much sense, but it makes sense to her. Sense to her. Um. If I save your life tonight, I'll drive. Okay. Hey. Well, your capture asset. I actually don't know what that is. I'm so sorry. It's your. It's literally the asset that you that you said it's a song, so it'd be your sing or your music talent asset. Performance. Okay. Yeah, performance plus <laughs> five total. Five is a success. So you sing your song and slowly the empty suit begins to fold itself into a nice, neat, triangular pattern and disappears into your quiver. We'll go over later what a haunted quiver is like since you've captured him against as well. With that, I'm going to pull us out of the combat rounds and go immediately back to Diddy, who is standing before. Effectively a sphinx. Effectively a sphinx, correct. And Sands, you have a new card in your Older. At least you should. Nope, I moved the wrong one. Okay, that should be it. Okay, so Diddy. Uh, you are before this sphinx like creature. You've agreed to answer its riddle. My riddle, little one, is plain and simple to see. You simply need to know what is the password. I want to say please. No, that is not it. <laughs> Two more guesses, and then I get to eat you up like a yummy little dessert. You're small enough. I don't think you'll make my waist too big. <laughs> Claws. Oh, 
I described your hair wrong. It's actually cut in a Betty Boop uh, bob. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, let me go back to the description since I gave it incorrectly. Uh, a lioness's hindquarters and forelegs, an 18 year old human girl from the chest up. Her dark hair is cut in a Betty Boop bob. And she wears a crop top so tight you can tell that she has piercings. Uh, and cut just low enough that she does not show her under boob. She has multiple piercings in her left ear, but a single loop that, that runs to her right ear. A light chain runs from the piercing in her right nostril to the loop in her ear. Damn. The riddle was plain to see, right? The riddle is plain to see. What is the password? By this time, the rest of you have begun approaching this. He's not that smart. Oh, God. See, I, I want to I wanna roll to see if I can figure this out. You have anything that would help you figure this out? Nope, we didn't skills. hear the riddle, did we? For timing's sake, uh, yes, you have all heard the all have heard the riddle. Can I roll knowledge or lucky? Uh, lucky. Okay. Eight. With an eight. Something in the riddle itself is the clue to what the answer is. It's land. No. Well, then I'm about to die. It's plain to see. I don't want my, I don't want to guess I don't want to guess password because that's the dumbest thing ever. You're right. <laughs> it is the password. Congratulations. You can have. The mystic orb. And as she <laughs> says this and gestures to the pearl, there is a distinct shift in the air as if it's being displaced. And all of you watch as this beat up old rusty VW bus appears out of nowhere. The side door opens. Bucket reaches out, grabs the pearl, waves at you. And then the van vanishes. Fucking prank. We're going to drop the curtain right there tonight. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. All right, everybody. Why do you think I was so hesitant to take the job to begin with? Thank God, you. Damn it. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us tonight. I would like to thank my players, Sands, Start Adventurer, Ruth, Hellhounds. Special thanks to our producer tonight, uh, Mudkip. <laughs> yes, and yet another one shot ends in betrayal. <laughs> uh, I would like to thank our audience in Twitch. Thank you so much, chat. I appreciate you all being there, participating. And uh, if you're watching us on the VOD, thank you so much for joining us. If you're watching us on the YouTube production, and you liked what you've seen, please hit that like, hit that subscribe, leave us a comment. Um, and if you've, you've enjoyed the system, once again, the author is MC Griffin. 
His link, is, you can find his link on itch. Uh, let me pull it back up one more time and post it for y'all. And uh, my saves aren't saving. <laughs> And I would love for you all to uh, please stay safe out there, stay well, and please be kind to each other. Have a good night. Have a good night. Thank you all.